Well, welcome in everybody. Lisa Tamani here at Pushing the Limits. Today I've got this wonderful, wonderful person for you and I'm just so excited. Dr. Sandra Kaufman, welcome to the show. It's so fabulous to have you here. Hi, I am so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. It's wonderful. So you are uh, an amazing woman. You are, you're an anesthetist. You're, a, um, it, it, you're still at the pediatric, in, in the, um, the head of the pediatric hospital department thingy that you're still doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm always so, surprised yeah. because you should be in I'm still in doing that thingy. Yes. That thingy. Yeah. You're still yeah. the head of the pediatric anesthesiology. <laughs> uh, but you are also the author of two incredible books, uh, The Kaufman Protocol, um, Why We Age and How Not To, and The Aging Solutions. And you're the longevity queen. Basically, you are the queen of, of, of trying to work out how to stop aging and how to slow aging and how to reverse aging. Uh, that's your that's your other thing. The seven tenets of aging that you have developed. Tell us how you got into it, because I know you were you were hanging off a cliff in your mid forties, going, "Hang on, I'm not going to be able to do this much longer if I don't actually work out this aging thing." So I better go and cure it, <laughs> cure aging. <laughs> right, um, right. It's a little bit like you know, it's it's the Don Quixote. Of course, I can figure out aging, kind of you know, ridiculous malarkey. And when I started saying it, people are like, "Uh huh." <laughs> sure you are yeah good luck with that you know ha have have some more uh you know um yeah, ridiculous to chase or some windmills anyway uh yeah so i was a cell biologist before i went to med school uh before i was hanging off the cliffs and uh, i thought you know what i gotta i gotta figure this out and it and it it seems utterly ridiculous but when i started doing this there was no, no there was no longevity science there no. was no the word anti-aging didn't exist, right? None of this existed. And so what I ended up doing is I would sit there on Google Scholar because I was at the hospital and had access to all the like, you know, academic literature. Um, and I sort of decided that you age from a cellular basis, probably because I'm a cell biologist, but also because that's that's where, you know, the real, you know, as you said, the meat and potatoes of, of your body is, you are cells. Um, and you take it apart piece by piece and you see over the course of time what goes wrong in a cell. Mm -hmm. And it's it's so many things, right? And so, you know, I've said this before, so you've you know, people may have heard me say this. I, I put everything on post-it notes and my office look like, you know, a paper factory had blown up. <laughs> um, but over the course of time, right, these ideas and concepts seem to coalesce onto seven piles. Uh, and that's how I sort of came up with the seven tenets of aging. And people always say, oh, you're, you know, not being good to the hallmarks of aging, blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> when I did this, I mean, it was, that was just to sort of like, it was, a, it was an article I read. I'm like, yeah, that's maybe, you know, maybe, maybe not. And no one was talking about any of this stuff. So the seven tenets came out of absolute grit and determination for me to determine why cells age. Um, as well, at, at the time, the connections between some of the tenants didn't exist, right? So now mm -hmm. we, we can see, for example, that sirtuins are epigenetic modifiers, therefore they also affect your DNA and your histones. And there's a lot of crosstalk between the tenants. Um, but at the time when I did this, we didn't know any of that, right? Yeah, so this crazy. was a very, very basic way to try to understand and organize why cells go bad over time. And that's, you know, like, I think that's amazing because it's like being a pioneer. That's like the first, you know, mountaineer, climb Mount Everest, you know, like, because you didn't have like everyone else is built on the, the hallmarks of aging, right? And your stuff is within the hallmarks of aging. They're in those tenants, but you work that out by yourself, you know, and that's what I find so incredible. And seven's a hell of a lot easier to manage than 12. And well, and they keep changing the number. That's what yeah, pisses yeah. me off. Yeah. They keep changing it, right? And and what I like about the seven tenants is that the the categories are broad enough, right? That as we discover new things they magically fall under a category or two, yeah. right? So for example, one of my tenants is called pathways. And generally I talk about sirtuins and AMP kinase and the mTOR pathway. Mm -hmm. But recently I've been obsessed with circadian rhythms and it turns out that's all molecular pathways. And of course it goes to rivering aging and blah, 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 blah. So my next book will now put circadian rhythms under pathways because it's, it's, it's okay. a new thing, but it has to get categorized. So there it is. Now it's going to be in tenant three. Now that's brilliant. And we'll talk about circadian rhythms as we go on, but let's give the, the readers a bit of a brief. And, you know, I, I know you've said this ad nauseum on podcasts, but let's go through the seven tenets so that people get a bit of a, a framework and then let's dive into some of the new stuff that you're doing. 
So tenant mm -hmm. one, uh, information, systems, DNA, tell us about tenant one. Right. So tenant one was supposed to be sort of things that go wrong with your DNA over time, right? So it's DNA alterations. Um, the easiest one, and you of course talked about Bill Andrews a little bit. He is the tell him your God, as far as I'm concerned. So I always tread lightly because I don't want to say anything that Bill would be like, yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but over time, right, we know that telomeres get shorter over over time and with replication. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of things sort of affect telomere length, oxidation does, glycation does, et cetera. But the idea that your telomeres get shorter over time is very important. So that's a piece of tenant one. Mm -hmm. um, epigenetics falls into tenant one. And epigenetics is sort of like an organizational system for your DNA. Um, and it gets altered, of course, over the course of time, right? It gets methylated, it gets demethylated, it gets phosphorylated, et cetera. And the pattern to which how you control your DNA erodes. So that's part of it. Uh, and a new thing that I've added to that pile is now the structure of your DNA and how it's contained in your nucleus. Mm -hmm. uh, so we talk about euchromatin and heterochromatin. So when you look at the nucleus, it sort of looks like a bowl of spaghetti. And people used to think it was all very disorganized. Now we know euchromatin looks looser because mm -hmm. we're actually using it and the hetero is more bunched together but the control system of that of course fails over time so that's sort of very important so those are like the three big parts of, of tenant one mm -hmm. and that's sort of that dna repair piece of that puzzle and what and, is and, being and, read well wait wait no. repair is a different category oh that's it yeah okay so um right now tenant two what does tenant two fall under so, so that right, so cellular energy right so, it's, right, exactly. It's your energy system. So, it boils down to your mitochondria. Uh, and mitochondria, it turns out, I've identified six or seven reasons that your mitochondria fail over time. Lowest hanging fruit has to be uh, lack of NAD, mm -hmm. right? We all know yep. that one, and everyone's been sort of supplementing yeah, yeah. with NAD precursors. And NMNs and NRs and, <laughs> yeah. Exactly, right? IV and patch and oral. And, uh, anyway, so that, that's a big one. Um, and then, of course, your free radical scavenging systems are huge because we use oxygen, of course, because we're aerobic creatures. Oxygen gets um, uh, radicalized by electrons in your mitochondria. You have a whole system to sort of diffuse all of that. But of course, mm -hmm. that fails over time. So that that's a big problem. Yeah. Uh, and then we talk about things like the mitochondrial permeability transition pore. Yep. So these are pores on the side of your mitochondria. They're supposed to flicker. Over time, as you get older, they just sort of open up a lot and they pour toxic stuff out into your cell. That's a problem. So by controlling the pore, you can sort of help control aging. Um, but there's lots of things. So like there's mitochondrial DNA that changes over time. Um, there's there's a variety of sort of picky any things in there. But the idea is that two, ten of two is basically about mitochondrial failure. Yep. And that's at the basis of so many things. And then we've got number three, which is cellular pathways. So so, uh, yeah, yeah, the cystic yep. twins and things like that. Right, right. So, so, so the idea of pathways is that there it gets coded by your genes mm -hmm. and it creates proteins and enzymes that then affect other systems. So it's 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 a pathway, right? So you have seven mammalian sirtuins, right? We're mammals, so we have seven of them, mm -hmm. um, and they live around your cell, and they're all histone deacetylases. So essentially, they're on-off switches. By taking um, groups off of an enzyme, it usually turns it on. Sometimes it turns it off, but usually it turns it on. And mm -hmm. it turns out it's histone and non-histone. It doesn't really matter. It's just whatever. Anyway, but there's seven of them. Uh, sirtuin one controls pretty much all cellular homeostasis. And of course, over the age of 40, it doesn't work very well. So all of your sort of cellular systems could go cockamamie. Um, in terms of aging, right, one, three, and six are important. Uh, three lives in your mitochondria, three, four, and five, but three is sort of like the main one. There's evidence that sort of two and three drops by the time you're 35. Wow. So that's where real aging starts. Mm -hmm. And then six and seven live in your nucleus and they sort of control uh, the, as we talked about the hetero versus euchromatin ratios and how all that is sort of protected over time. So we really have to upregulate one, three, and six specifically to sort of maintain cellular homeostasis. Um, other pathways, there's something called your AMP kinase pathway, and this measures energy, mm -hmm. uh, basically tells you when you don't have energy and it turns on mechanisms to save energy, putting your body in a bit of a hibernation system. Uh, and then you do better with longevity. And this is one of the big reasons, not the only reason, but one of the big reasons that caloric restriction sort of helps you over time. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yep. And I've done uh, a lecture then, on, on that 
one if anyone wants to dive into AMPK and mTOR <laughs> go on and look it's, at their podcast right it's it's so complicated and it but, but it's so much fun to play with because you can either starve yourself you can take memetics you can do all sorts of wacky things to sort of play with that system um other thing in this system is the mTOR pathway mm -hmm. uh and this is a mechanism that measures, again, the amount of energy like AMP kinase, but it does the opposite. So it builds tissue. Uh, and there's evidence that over the course of time, it needs to sort of turn off and it doesn't. So people are big, of course, into mTOR blockers. Mm -hmm. The biggest rapamycin, there's this whole deal like, should you take it? When do you take it? How much do you take? Blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, we'll get into that. So that that's that's sort of a ask big, you. Yeah. controversial thing. And yep. then so while we're in pathways, again, I'll throw circadian rhythms in there because that's a pathway. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's basically tenant. What are we on? Three. Three. So yeah, that's number three. So number four is quality control. Quality control. So as you probably imagined, well, you already know, but as your listeners might have imagined, a lot of this is designed after the idea that if you were a factory, how would you control things, right? That's a great so analogy. if your factory is making yep. widgets, you have to have a quality control division, which goes around checking things that are going wrong. So in this category, your DNA gets screwed up over time, right? As we talked about in tenant one, but this is where all of the repair systems come mm -hmm. in. And it turns out you have, in a simplistic fashion, four to five different DNA repair mechanisms. And of course, you have a, you, you have about 10 to the fifth DNA errors per cell per day. So it's a lot. Um, so your, your repair mechanisms are really quite busy. And of course, as you get older, they fail. So you have more DNA errors, which is why you have more cancers and disease as you get older. Wow. Um, the other thing, the other widgets that you're making are, of course, proteins, right? So there's a whole system of proteostasis, meaning mm -hmm. homeostasis of proteins, and it has to do with how they're folded, how they have chaperones, how they get destroyed, how they get controlled through your body. Uh, obviously, this fails over time. And the good news is you can upregulate a lot of that stuff to keep it going. And then the last thing in this category is something called autophagy, which is cellular recycling at its essence, right? So if you have something that you can't fix, you recycle it and you get the pieces and parts out to use someplace else. Yeah. So spermidine being one of those, my favorites just off the top of my head there <laughs> for that. Oh, exactly. I love spermidine. Love yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. And then number five is the immune system. Another one of my favorite things to be studying at the moment. We're doing a deep dive in our long, uh, supplement company into immunosenescence. So tell me about the immune system and why it becomes our sort of enemy when we get older and from aging and all of that. Yeah, so the immune system, as you know, is extraordinarily complicated. Mm -hmm. um, you have your, new, your innate and your... Adaptive. Oh, my God. <laughs> you learn <laughs> your, your normal and then your learned systems. Blah. Anyway, yeah, you're adaptive. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I need more caffeine. Um, so, of course, over time, these they all fail. And unfortunately, what happens is instead of helping you, it hurts you. So you become uh, more inflamed over time. So all these cytokines that are supposed to control infection actually hurt you. Um, so cytokinins basically put you in a full body state of inflammatoryness, right? Mm -hmm. People would say, oh, I'm swollen, I'm inflamed. So over the age of 40, people are generally inflamed and, and controlling the cytokine and release is, is absolutely huge. And of course, uh, like the more fat you have, uh, you've got adipocytokinins, which is terrible. Mm -hmm. um, the more senescent cells you have, and we'll get to that in a second, the mm -hmm. more inflammatory uh, problems that you have. So it just becomes this exponentially growing problem after the age of 35, 40, that you are chronically inflamed. Inflammation, of course, causes cell damage. It causes DNA damage, which is yet another reason that you're set up for cancer. Yes, and that's a biggie, you know, that I, I don't think a lot of people actually know that without going off on a tangent too much, that your immune system keeps you safe from cancer. And if it's going awry, then your risk of cancer is going up, you know, one hell of a lot. So, yeah, uh, so the immune system and the, the so, so, so crucial and, you know, your, your neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio and things like that, that keep an eye on it, that whole landscape of your your immune cells becomes problematic. So that's tenant number uh, five. Then we're right. on to tenant number six is individual cells because we're sort of talking generally that cells are all the same up until now, but this is where it gets, no, they're not quite the same. You have clearly heard my speech before because that's exactly what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love you. Right. I think you're amazing. That's why I've been listening terrible. and learning because I want to like get this and absorb it all. <laughs> oh, this is really funny. I'm like, oh my God, I don't have to say that. Um, <laughs> you're absolutely right. I do. I do pretend in general that all cells are the same, uh, but we know that they are not. 
Uh, and this category started with the idea that a red cell has different requirements than a liver cell versus a brain cell, because some of them turn over, some of them don't, some of them need more glucose, some of them don't. Um, and additionally, right, then there's special cells. So your stem cells are things that you really need to take care of, right? You need to make sure the niche is healthy and all the insults to your stem cells are sort of minimized. Um, there's a whole science to stem cell care. Uh, and then, of course, senescent cells are the opposite. And these are things that we want to eradicate. Um, and just there's so we're only, all on the same yeah. page, of course, you know this, but, I'm, you yeah. know, let's say. Uh, For the listener. A senescent cell basically is a normal, was a normal cell. Uh, it experienced some DNA damage and the cell shuts itself down, puts it like in a little timeout and says, okay, let's, let's fix ourselves. And if it can, great, it goes back to being a normal cell. And if it cannot, one of two things happens. Either it becomes a cancer cell and you hope that some immune cell, like a natural killer cell comes along and eats it and it's done. Uh, but more likely than not, it becomes a senescent cell. And some people talk about them as zombie cells. I think of them as grumpy old man yeah, cells. I love that analogy. Uh, grumpy old men right? that are just spewing negativity into the world. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they're fat. They're bulbous. Like they don't do what they're supposed to do. They're grumpy, right? And they do. They put out the stuff, stuff called the SASP, which is your senescent uh, phenotypic cytokines. Yep. Cytokines storm, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. yeah it's these, these old fat guys just whining about the world and it's contagious. So if there's another guy sitting next to him, then, then he becomes senescent, right? It's like, it's why you have to get rid of the old fat guy at your factory because he's just going to like make everyone sort of toxic, <laughs> right? I mean, makes sense. So, 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 so getting rid of senescent cells is, is a key part of sort of maintaining a healthy cellular environment. Yep. Um, yep. And there's yep. a whole bunch of analytics and we can get into that in, in a little bit. And, yeah. So, and, and the very last tenant, um, tenant seven is waste management. And this is all to do with glucose and glycation and advanced glycation end products and all of that sort of stuff. Oh yeah. So, you know, so on the mafia model, right? You have a factory, you got to take out the trash. If you don't take out the trash, you're sort of hosed. Um, and so your metabolic trash is basically glucose, right? We need glucose to live, but too much of it is a bad thing. And even the stuff that isn't too much is, is bad, gets into your system and it, and it glycates. And, and I like to say that sugar is sticky outside of your body, just like a lollipop and it's sticky on the inside and it bonds non-enzymatically. It means it's just like sticks, like, like glue. Sticks yep. to proteins, sticks to lipids, sticks to DNA. Uh, and the problem with this, of course, is that proteins work by three-dimensional structure. And as soon as you glue something on there, the three-dimensional structure is gone. So that, that protein that you spent so much energy making doesn't work anymore, right? So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that it, that's called an AGE, an advanced glycation end product. So this is a protein with something stuck on it. Those are very inflammatory. So that adds to our inflammatory pile from before, mm. right? And this, this big molecule is sticky too. So it likes to stick to tissue, tissues that are sort of long lived in your body. So it loves collagen as an example, right? And it's that, that, that <laughs> analogy that you had with a serviette or thing, you know, where you, you stick two levels of the serviette together with a glue and then it doesn't slide over each other anymore. And that's your collagen. Yeah. Exactly. And this is, you know, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, uh, so in the US, we have like cloth table napkins, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, a little bit of glue, right? And it just, yeah, all your fibers rip and it does your collagen rips. And people wonder why their skin droops over time. Well, it's it's glycation problems. Wow. And it's also why your bones are frail. Um, they get cross linked. Mm. Some cross links are good. Most of these AGE cross links are terrible. Yep. So it affects your skin. It affects your bone. It affects your heart. Your heart has a ton of collagen in it. Um, and collagen is long lived. It's really hard to turn that over. And there's a lot of art and science to try to stimulate collagen growth, but in general, it's really tough. So glycation, and, and it does, obviously glycation does other things as well. Um, but eyes, in general, yeah. Oh, oh, it's everything. So, so one of the things I love and people, it's so funny. This is the one thing I get so many emails about is I always talk about carnosine eye drops. Yes. Right. Yes. Because, I'm doing that now since I've. Right. Is, is it helping? Yeah. 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 Cause you know, 55 Amazing. and I'm like, my eyes are very good actually because I've done a lot of glycation stuff um, or anti-glycation stuff but yeah kind of seen I've just noticed the focusing ability sometimes has been a little bit yeah slow so yeah I've started using carnosine drops um, and taking carnosine so not carnitine people like carnosine carnosine we're talking about and that's uh, also you know as you said a, a, a transglycosylating 
Gee, that's a long yep. hard word to say, isn't it? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, agent, so it sucks up the AGUs basically. So I've been taking it for that as well. So yeah, that was one that you put me onto. I'm like, right, into it. <laughs> 